We have been looking for many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us, we ask, will our people do their duty in the matter? Can we not assist in lifting the standard and in calling to the front those who have a regard for their religious rights and privileges? Good morning, everybody, and a happy Sabbath. And those of you watching on Zoom, happy Sabbath. Can you hear me? You can, all right, I can hear you. All right. All right, praise God. It's good to see so many young people here today because what I have to share here has a lot to do with young people. I did not expect this. I must say this ahead of time. Usually when I take the time to prepare messages, sometimes I have in my mind what I want to present. But then on Sabbath morning, I find myself heading in a different direction. So I always allow the Spirit of God to lead me because He knows exactly what not only I need to hear, but what His people need to hear. So again, welcome this morning on this beautiful Sabbath day. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We want to thank you in a special way for sparing our lives and allow us to be here once again on this beautiful day to worship you. And as we do so, Lord, as you have said to the woman at the well, we pray that we will do so in spirit and in truth. Send your angels as well to minister unto us and the Comforter to comfort our minds and to help us to understand spiritual things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You have heard of the saying that if the blind lead the blinds, what would happen to all of them? As this picture is illustrating it, they will all fall into a pit. And the Bible also counsels us through the prophet Moses that we should not follow a multitude to do evil. And we are living in evil days. And as many of you have been studying with us and know about this we are looking at a mark of the beast which is really inevitable and what I would like to address today has a lot to do not so much with the mark of the beast but with the mind what are the two places that the Bible says that some will receive the mark of the beast what are the, those two places Right? The hand and the forehead. The mind, right? The mind. We have a battle that has been raging ever since this coronavirus. And if you look at it carefully, as we've done a study on this before, this battle is really to change the mind, to change your perception, to change your allegiance. And we're going to be talking about this a little bit. In light of this, Remember what Jesus says in the book of John chapter 14 verse 15. He says in the book of John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. And the battle, this great controversy, is over and will be over the commandments of God as it was, as it was even way back in heaven. I was going to say the garden, but even way back in heaven when uh, Lucifer rebelled against the laws of God and against God himself. So Jesus says, for those of us who love him in these last days, if we love him, what must we do again? John 14, 15, what must we do? Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. So what does that mean? If you love him, keep his commandments. Well, it really means that's how you would show love for Jesus Christ, right? That's how you would show love. That is also what the Bible describes, your faith in action, right? You can say you have faith, but the action really show that you have faith. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 14, the same chapter where Jesus says, 
If you love me, keep my commandments. That would be in verse 15. But we're going to go to verse 21. John chapter 14, verse 21. Give you a moment to get there. John chapter 14, verse 21. And the Bible says, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that do what? That loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. So he repeats that. He said, those that have my commandments are those who do what? Who truly really love me. Those who keep the commandments. And Jesus also expressed that he always do the things that please the Father. He kept the Father's commandments and abide in the Father's law. Amen? That's how he showed that he loved the Father. It was by keeping the Father's commandments. Again, keep in mind, the frontal lobe, the battle for the mind. And God, through the prophet Moses again, had counseled the children of Israel to bind up the testimony and sell the laws among my disciples. Teach your children to keep the law, to observe the law of God. As a matter of fact, the Hebrews, what they did to teach their children, the way they taught their children about the laws of God, they put it into a song so that they could remember it. They could remember it. They would sing that. Now go to the book of Psalm with me. Psalm chapter 1. Where are we heading to? Psalm chapter 1. Notice what the psalmist tells us here in the book of Psalm chapter 1. And we'll begin in the very first chapter. Psalm chapter 1. Now this passage here, I believe, it has a direct application to the third angel's message. Which tells us to fear God and give glory to Him. And especially with the issue of the mark of the beast. The Bible says in chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, let me know if you're there. Are you there? Yes. Amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But notice verse 2. It says, but his delight is where? Is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he does what? Meditate day and night. So our delight must be where? In the law of the Lord. And in God's law, we must meditate day and night. Can someone check this? Make sure that it's working? Yeah, it's working. It's working? Yeah. Okay. And in His law, we must meditate day and night. That's what we were counseled. And this is what is going to help us in these last days. The laws of the land versus the laws of men. Now, in the next passages we're about to look at, we're going to go to the book of Luke, chapter 6, then Matthew, chapter 7, then we're going to go to the book of James, chapter 1. Now, all of those passages are telling us this here. If we love God, as Jesus says, we keep His commandments. We show that we love Him by keeping His commandments. If He is your Lord, then you must do what he asks you to do. Go to the book of Luke this time. Luke chapter 6. Where are we heading to? Luke chapter 6. Notice again what the Bible says in the book of Luke. Jesus is speaking here and again dealing with the same idea, the will of God and the commandments of God, which is really the same thing. Because the Bible says this is the will of God that ye keep his commandments and his commandments are not what? Grievous. Grievous. The Bible says in chapter 6 of the book of Luke, notice in verse 46. It says in verse 46, And why call ye me, Jesus says, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I what now? I say, whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, and what else? And doeth them. I will show you to whom he is like. So if you hear the words, you must become also doers of the words. Go to chapter 7, backward to chapter 7, 
and in verse 21. Now keep in mind, in chapter 7, it is the same chapter that Jesus was describing the narrow path that we must follow in these last days. Then he says in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 7, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does what again? Doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And what is the will of the Father he's describing here? Keep the commandments. So it's not the doers of the word, or the hearers, I should say. It's not the hearers of the word that will be justified before God. It is the doers of the word. It is those who hear the word and allow the words to become one with them as Christ is one with the Father. Allow the word of God to transform them and it is by doing so. Notice James chapter 1 this time. Go forward to the book of James chapter 1 and James chapter 1 confirm exactly what I just said a moment ago. It is not the hearers of the word who will be justified in the sight of God. It is the doers of the word. If you are doing what the word says, that means you had already heard it, but now you are putting it in action. The Bible says in chapter 1 of the book of James, notice carefully with me. Let's begin in verse 22. It says, But be ye doers of what? Of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own self. So what happened if you just hear, but you don't do? You deceive yourself. That's what the Bible says. It says, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. Let's pause. His natural face in a glass? Well, the law of God is portrayed in the Bible, Paul says this, as unto a mirror, like a glass. When you look into the, that mirror, which is the law of God, what do you see? What do I see when I look into that? Think, think, think. What, what, what do I see? I see my sin, right? I see my sin because that's what the law does. The law shows me my sin, but can the law save me? Or I should say, this is where doing comes in. You understand? Because knowing what the law had showed me, just hearing what the law says will not save me. Remember what the Bible says, that the law condemns. He says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then the Bible says, for the wages of sin is yes. death. Where do I see death? Keep that word death in mind. We'll come back to this. Where do I see death? When I look into the mirror. When I look into the commandments of God. I deserve death. Because I am a transgressor of the law of God. Right? I have transgressed. All have sins, the Bible says. And come short of the glory of God. So when I look into that glass, that mirror. I see my sin and I deserve death. But, did the text stop there? No. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but what follows? But the gift of God. What is it now? Eternal. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Thank God, right? Amen. Thank God for the gift of God. That's where the doing comes in. You understand? So I... Look into the mirror. I hear about the law of God. I hear about the word of God. That's the hearing part of it. It tells me that I am a condemned person. Right? Because I have broken the laws of God. But then it says, the same law that cannot save me, it says, go to Jesus. That's what it means when it says, but what? The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That means the law tells me to go to Jesus. But what if I don't listen to what the law tells me? And I just stop there. Right? Having a knowledge of what the law says will not save me. You understand? It's good. But with that alone, as the apostle says, let's go back to verse 22. He says, But, ye, but be ye doers 
of the word and not hearers only. Emphasis on the word only. You see it? So I need to go to Jesus Christ now for cleansing. Then let's back up to verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself. Well, that's exactly what I see when I look into the mirror. I see myself. When, you remember when the children of Israel were in the wilderness? And they were murmuring, complaining, sinning against God. And then all of a sudden, those uh, fiery serpents that they could not see, didn't know they were there. They were there the whole time. Those serpents were there the whole time. But it wasn't until they started to break the laws of God, murmuring against God, then God allowed those serpents to come out now to bite them. But the whole time, it's not like those serpents just came out of nowhere. They were there the, whole, the entire time. As long as they were doers of the word, God was protecting them. But the moment they started to break the laws of God, God allowed those fiery serpents to come out and to bite them. But again, still, even in that account, we saw the grace of God. What was the grace of God? When the people started to complain, not so much complain, but confessing their sins, what did God say to Moses to do? He said, made a brazen serpent, and when the people looked unto it, what would happen to them? So, they sinned, they received the condemnation, but they had to do something. Look unto the brazen serpent, whom Jesus says himself, if I be lifted up, I will do what? Draw all men unto me. When Jesus said that, he was going back to when Moses lift up that brazen serpent. And when the people look unto it, what happened to their sins? What happened to the fiery serpents? Well, God took them away and they were healed from the bites of the serpent. So we need to look unto Jesus by faith. That's the doing. Amen? That's the doing. That's our part in these last days. As we are keeping His commandments, this is the reason why He says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Let's keep reading. Back to verse 24. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. What is it called? Law of liberty. That means it's also the law of life. You understand? It condemns, right? If you break the law, it condemns you. But it is also the law of liberty, the law of life. It says, And continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. He shall be what? Blessed in his deed. Amen? And we can also read something very similar here. You can see the reference there in Romans chapter 2, verse 13. But I want to go to the reward there of being obedient to the word of God. Go to Isaiah. Where we are heading to? Isaiah chapter 1. In Isaiah chapter 1, the Bible tells us in chapter 1, and looking at verse 19, Isaiah chapter 1, notice what the Bible says. If we are doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. Notice what it says here in verse 19. If ye be willing and uh, what's the next word? Obedient. Obedient, Obedient to what? The to the law. That's the doing. You see, I hear, now I do. Amen. If ye be willing and uh, obedient. Notice willing. Now. The word willing there applies what? Oh, it means what now? Willing. What's the will? You know, see the, the word will, will. The desire. The desire. It, it's the mind, right? If you make that decision, amen? Keep in mind. Bind up the testimony, seal the law, where? Among my disciples, where? The frontlets. Remember, the frontlets. If you be willing and... 
obedient, what will happen? Ye shall eat the good of the land. Which land is this? Which land? We're talking about the heavenly Canaan. We're talking about the paradise. Amen? We're talking about the garden of Eden. If you be willing and be obedient. That's a promise for each one of us. Amen? Notice what Spirit of Prophecy says. She says, we must place our will. There's the word will again. On the side of God's will. It makes all the difference there is between the servant of God and the servant of the evil one. Where the will is placed. If our will is on the side of self and Satan, we shall be transgressors of the law of God. If our will is on the side of God, we shall be his obedient children. Jesus declared, I have kept my father's commandments and he bids us follow in his steps. John writes, he that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. The keeping of the commandments of God involves a what? It involves what? A cross. a cross. What does that mean? It involves a cross. That means self must die, right? We must crucify self. It involves a cross because it's unlike the natural man. The keeping of the law of God is unlike the natural man. It's unlike what I want to do, right? So it requires a cross. And it's the training of the mind. Be ye renewed, God says. Amen? Amen? What's that? Take up your cross and follow me. Very good. That's Matthew chapter 10. Take up your cross and follow me. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy goes on to say. This is from Signs of the Times, May 15, 1893. There is no safety for any of us unless, notice carefully, unless we trust fully in God and take a decided stand guarding the water. The avenues of the what? Of the will. And how do you do this? What did we just read a moment ago in the book of Psalm chapter 1? What did the psalmist say? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful, nor standing in where? With, with the sinners. But his delight is where? In the law. Of the Lord. Again, she says, and take a decided stand guarding the avenues of the will. So when we delight in the law of the Lord, we are guarding the avenues of the will. Notice, resisting the first insinuations of Satan, rejecting his counsel to yield to questionable impulses. This requires watchfulness, perseverance, and continual adherence. To the word of God under all circumstances. We are here as probationers and are deciding our own eternal destiny. Then how important it is that we, how often? Daily educate and train the will power to render obedience to God in the least as well as in the greatest tests. How important to ever remember the fact, thou God seest me, thou knowest every thought and art acquainted with every what? Action. Well, we need to guard well, as she says, the avenue of the mind by putting something into the mind. Not emptying the mind out, but by, as the psalmist says, one more time, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate. How often? Day and night. Because why? The Bible tells us. In the book of Peter. That to be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary. The devil. Walks about like a roaring lion. Why? Because he's seeking for somebody to devour. Satan wants to destroy us. Satan is the author of death. Satan is, as some called him, a warrior. 
Well, the Bible just said that he is like a warring lion. And when a lion war, what does it mean? It means they want to hunt some, something and they want to kill something. Now, speaking of death, notice carefully with me. This is from the Telegraph. This is in the UK, July 17, 2020. Public Health England's exaggerated death statistics are a scandal that has fed fear. Has Public Health England been exaggerating the COVID-19 daily death statistics? It appears that PHE compiles out of hospital, what's the word again? Deaths by searching the NHS database for whether that person ever tested positive. Notice carefully, it then apparently failed to consider how long ago that person tested positive or the actual cause of death. Notice, by this PHE definition, notice what it says next, no one with COVID in England is allowed to ever recover from their illness. What? Satan is like what? A roaming lion going about seeking whom he may devour. No one is supposed to recover from COVID-19. They keep making up the numbers. Remember, COVID-19 is about the population. It's about death. Notice the next one. Why no one can ever recover from COVID-19 in England? A statistical anomaly. Notice, people living in England have become increasingly concerned in the face of public health England's figures demonstrating a relentless daily toll of more than a hundred COVID associated deaths several days a week. No one with COVID in England is allowed to ever recover from their illness. A patient who has tested positive but successfully treated and discharged from hospital, notice, will still be counted as a COVID-19 death, even after if they had a heart attack or, notice, were run over by a bus three months later. They still count this as a COVID-19 death. Who invented this? Who invented this? Satan. Now, speaking of death, notice this picture with me. This is a COVID-19 mobile testing facility. This is a place where they want you to go to be tested to see if you have the disease. And I have counseled Christians, Seventh-day Adventists, not to go there and be tested because they'll put the disease in you. But this is what I want you to focus on here. You see the arrow here? What is this? What is this image here? Can you guess what that image is? Notice. Why does the COVID-19 testing facility have a logo of who? Anubis, the god of death. No wonder nobody can recover from COVID-19. No wonder they are saying that if you die from a motorcycle accident, that has been classified as a COVID-19 death. No wonder now those quote-unquote health experts, scientists, are looking into what really caused the death of the people during the flood of Noah. It was COVID-19. They, they found out that those people did not really die from the flood. It was really COVID-19. And those in Sodom and Gomorrah, they did not really die from the fire. It was COVID-19. David did not really kill Goliath by a sword. Goliath died by COVID-19. Everybody is dying of COVID-19. Everything. Every other diseases, crimes. No more crimes in our world today. No more accident. Everything is COVID-19. Who's behind this? Satan. Under this God of Anubis. Notice this is Anubis here. This so-called Egyptian God. Now you have part human and part animal. Here's what Wikipedia tells us about Anubis. It says Anubis or Inpu, Enpu in ancient Egyptian is the Greek name of the God of 
death, mummification, embalming, the afterlife, cemeteries, tombs, and the underworld. In ancient Egyptian religion, usually depicted as a canine or a man with a canine head. Back to this picture, we see this COVID-19 mobile testing facility with the god of Anubis, who represents what? The god of death. And they call this god, they call this a religion, Egyptian religion. So the whole COVID-19 is about what? A religion. And celebrating what? Death. I want you to keep that in mind, celebrating death. Notice this next one here. I want you to, parents, to keep this in mind here. Where are we going? Children of Anubis, it says. This is the same so-called God there. Anubis, children, would wander the world from that time on. Some stories of werewolves may have begun with Anubis children, though they were not the only ones. Ironically, some of Anubis children would go on to join the what? The Christian clergy and act as guardians of where? Of the dead within the framework of the church. At least a few kin of Anubis can be found in most large cities. Does that mean that we can find Anubis within the church yes. as well? Yes. Does that mean we can find Satan devices within the church and within our own household? Here is a video game that some children can find it on YouTube and all the video game devices and play it. It's called Gods of Rome, Wrath of Egypt. Now, in this clip here, this is showing you this God, so-called so -called God, Anubis. And many of our children are playing this. The God of death. Parents, pay attention carefully to what we're about to cover here. As I said before, this was an, I did not plan this. I woke up this morning as I was putting this together. Didn't expect that many children here today. And then this is where the Lord led me. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go along with it. Many parents, they have hired a babysitter that... They have in front of their children to watch their children. And that's video games today. We don't know what our children are playing. And this is a video game. Among many others, the God of death. Now, I'm going to come back to video games in a moment. Let's go here. This is from Lex18 NBC News. The headline here says, this was July 24th, 2020. The headline says, Obey shows up in Lexington skyline. You can see the word obey there. Notice, nearly everyone in Lexington is talking about it who drew the word obey in the sky. And why? The word was formed by a sky writer playing the display conjures images of the 1980s action film they live. It's a totalitarian what? society now i covered this in another video where some were saying the reason why this word appeared in the sky it's because they're trying to impose mandatory wearing of masks on us and telling us to obey i want you to keep the word obey in mind listen there's a good chance you saw it today and there are still a lot of questions about a message written in the sky over Lexington and Frankfurt. This afternoon, many of you started reaching out to us, sending pictures of the sky writing, the word obey, and it was written several times. LEX 18's Mike Valenti has more in the LEX 18 Big Story at 11. One giant word prompted what felt like one giant web of theories. Definitely strange. Um, not something I've ever seen before. A lot of people, though, saw it as a political message, maybe a rebuke to Governor Andy Bashir. You can see it as an anti-mask thing if you want, or you can see it as 
I don't know, an oppressive political message. Listen to the government. Um, I think the biggest like consensus among all of us was that it has to be somebody making a point about the mask mandate properly. As of tonight, our guess is as good as yours. Maybe the point was to try to keep us guessing with a message as cryptic as it was large. Of course, this pilot was doing a job and getting paid for it. The pilot told us he's been bombarded with calls about this. He wouldn't tell us anything about his client or how much he was paid. And what message was the client trying to send? The pilot said he wasn't told. I want you to keep in mind what the Bible says in both chapter 4 of the book of Acts and chapter 5. What did the disciples say as they were trying to stop them from preaching in the name of Jesus? They said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Now, we have been living, as the article says, in a totalitarian society. And they are even putting signs up there to force us to obey. And I'm telling you, Seventh-day Adventists, Christians out there, if you're going to yield to this, that means you are being transformed not into the image of Jesus, but to the image of the beast. And this is just a training ground right now, a dress rehearsal of what's coming soon and very soon. When we read what the Bible has to say carefully about the laws of the land and the laws of God, the issues will come down to this. We know this very well. And they know that what they are doing is about dictatorship. Now, again, I want you to keep in mind the word obey. Now, I'm going to go back here. This is another website, video game website. Again, parents, what are the words you see there? Obey me, it says. So who's telling people to obey? See the name there? It says Lucifer. This is a video game for children. Notice it says, the mighty firstborn. Who are they referring to? Lucifer. Lucifer is the avatar of pride and is the oldest among the seven demon brothers. He is one of the main characters in what? Obey me. The one master to rule them all that is also involved in the intimacy system of the game. Therefore, users can interact in the game and raise their relationship with whom? In the game. In the video game, parents. The children can interact and have a relationship with Lucifer in the video game. Where do you think those video games come from? Who's telling the children to obey? You think the children, after they've been so brainwashed, conditioned by Lucifer, by Satan, they will obey the laws of God? No! Again, I have no idea. I, well, I did not have any idea why God let me here. But now I see it. Notice, the same website says, Beelzebub. Who's Beelzebub? That's Satan. It says, Beelzebub is the avatar of gluttony and is the sixth oldest among the seven demon brothers. He is one of the main characters in what again? Okay. Obey me. One master to rule them all that is involved in the intimacy system of the game. Therefore, users can interact and raise their relationship with whom? With Beelzebub. And who's Beelzebub again? You think those video games were just innocent. How many times have you heard children say things like that? It's just an innocent thing. How many times have you heard even parents say things like that? You think that Satan is a fool? You are fighting an enemy that you cannot see. The Bible, one more time, the psalmist says, chapter 1, verse 2, that we need to dwell, meditate on the laws of God. Fill the mind. But we are allowing this babysitter to fill our children's mind with Lucifer's doctrines. Now, this is the world. Now let's come a little closer home. This is a Seventh-day Adventist Southwestern Union in the United States of America. Notice what it says there. On their Facebook, it says, Virtual Worship experience G-O-A-T, GOAT, 
greatest of all time playing for Jesus Christ. I wonder which Jesus they are referring to here. And they call this goat. Where do we find? Keep in mind what we just looked at here. Satan is telling your children to obey. Now we have the seven Adventists. This is our whole union there. We're not talking about just a church. We're not talking about a conference. We are talking about a union. That means that has conferences under it and churches under it. They are promoting what? At such a time as this, they are promoting virtual worship, they call it. And goat playing for Jesus. You know what they're referring to? Video games. As we just looked at here. Notice, speaking of goat, you see these images here? This is a goat. This is Baphomet. This is Satan. This is the same goat the Seventh-day Adventist is promoting here. It's Baphomet. It's Satan. Notice, last year I covered this. This says, Mobile Museum brings ancient history and Bible truths to life. This is the general conference promoting King Tot Roadshow. Who is King Tot? An Egyptian god that they were promoting. And it was a road, road show right here. It says, the road show which was officially dedicated in February received significant funding from the tithe money that you sent to the General Conference, South Pacific Division, and the Australian Union Conference, and the North, New South Wales, and Greater Sydney Conferences. They were promoting what? The gods of the Egyptians. And promoting them to your children as well. Now I want to go back to this conference here, what they're promoting. Here are the leaders promoting this. Again, virtual worship experience. Goat, greatest of all time, playing for Jesus. And then you have this pastor here, Helvis Moody. And this lady in the center. And then this guy here, Michael Polite. And these are the featured speakers as well. Who is Michael Polite again? Pastor. For those of you, he, yes, he is a pastor. But for those of you who were with us, at least a couple Wednesday meetings ago, remember we covered him here before? He was on Zoom a few months ago. He is, keep in mind, he is the youth director for the South Central Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Youth. Director, what was he promoting online? He says, our ancestors, when they came onto American shores, they were what? Mystics. They were spiritualists as we have disconnected ourselves from the mystic journey of transcendence. We have robbed ourselves of the great truth. What's the great truth? Is he referring to the Bible? The third angel's message, spirit of prophecy, no, mystics and spiritualism. He's referring to the great truth that we have robbed ourselves from. And he's saying we need to go back to those truths. Keep in mind, he is the youth directors, brainwashing your children, making them disciples of Satan. Notice, he goes on to say, rob ourselves of the great truth of the universe which is interconnectedness, one ism. It is the mysticism, notice, of our religion that we have lost. We have lost what? The mysticism of our religion. We're talking about pure paganism here. We're talking about pure devil worship. We're talking about voodoo. That's what this man is talking about here, that we have lost. We need to regain back. And... Again, he's a seven-day Adventist pastor, youth leader for that conference. And then some are going to get on Facebook, on YouTube. They're going to say that I'm always criticizing others. When they are leading you to Satan. And I sh should women cry about it? Notice, it goes on to say, he said, I have personally been called back to visit the spirituality of my ancestors. Who are they? The dead, he's referring to. Worshipping the dead. Then it says, recognizing that 
my ancestors are of the lineage of Abraham. We have separated ourselves from the mysterious spirituality of Yeshua as we connect with that spiritualist root. That many were taught to demonize. We were taught to demonize what? Spiritualism and mysticism. Who gave us spiritualism? Satan. Well, yes, I know Satan. Keep in mind, counter-reformation in the late 1500s, 1600s, Ignatius Loyola, the Jesuits, they were the ones who gave us spiritualism. But this man says, this is what we're missing. Notice, that many were taught to demonize. Our slave masters taught us to demonize our what? Spiritualism. But it's that spiritualism that holds the core truth of the gospel. Which gospel? Come on. We're talking about a Seventh-day Adventist leader, youth conference leader, telling us that we must go back to Catholicism and no outcry. Have you heard anything from Ted Wilson correcting this? As I said before, Ted Wilson is not a Seventh-day Adventist. Ted Wilson works for Rome. He's taking your tithes money, but he works for Rome. Neither is he. Very good. They all work for Rome. Now let's go back to what they are promoting. Here's what they're promoting. Again, Seventh-day Adventist Church, Southwestern Union, Young Adult Youth Ministry presents FIFA 20 Video Game Tournament. When? July 24th to 25th. Uh, let me let you, I'm going to allow you to think. What are those dates? Today. Today. What's today? Saturday. What was yesterday? Saturday. That was the 24th, Sabbath evening. And today, July 25th, Sabbath. So when is he promoting this? When are they promoting this? Remember what they said here? Remember they said virtual worship. What's a virtual worship? Playing video games to exalt Satan. On Sabbath. And I'm supposed... What does Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 say? What does it say? Cry aloud. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and do what? And show my people their sins. And I'm supposed to stay quiet. Don't talk about this. I'm not going into their private life. I'm going into what they're teaching and promoting out there. On Sabbath. What did Spirit of Prophecy say? In Selected Messages, Volume 2, Volume 1, what did she say? She says, a new organization will be formed, and the Sabbath itself will be lightly regarded. Are we seeing this being fulfilled? Yes. Notice, next picture, again, it says 2K20 Tournament, July 25th, Sabbath, today. Then it says, register. Registration ends and so on and so forth. First and second place prizes and all of those things. Do you understand what's happening here? Ted Wilson put the churches on like down for the most part. And what's happening? They're having virtual worship. And doing what? Brainwashing your young people. With video games bringing Satan into their mind. What did the Bible say again? Or in spirit of prophecy, God well the avenues of the mind. Amen? God well the avenues of the mind. Protect that mind because that's where Satan wants to dwell. Notice what spirit of prophecy says. This is from Vivian Herald, June 12, 1888. We have each of us an individual work to do. What's that work? To gird up the loins of our minds, to be sober. To watch unto prayer. Notice the mind must be firmly controlled. Huh? Yes. Firmly controlled. The mind must be firmly controlled to dwell upon subjects that will strengthen the moral powers. Oh, beautiful. Firmly controlled to dwell upon subjects that would do what? Strengthen. Strengthen the moral power. Will video games strengthen your kids? Moral power? No, it will weaken them. That's part of the reason why they put us on lockdown. 
and they gave us the entertainment. David says, Lord, cause me not to lay my eyes on anything wicked. Notice, it goes on to say, the youth should begin early to cultivate correct habits of thought. We should discipline the mind to think in a healthful channel and not permit it to dwell upon things that are evil. The psalmist exclaims, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm about to play a clip for you. When I watched that clip, I thought this was a joke. Really. I really thought it was a joke. But then I realized it was serious based on all of those pictures, everything we just read here. And this video I'm about to play for you came from the same conference there. The same Southwestern Union Conference. Again, as I said, I thought it was a joke. Here is the website or the Facebook page again where they are promoting this for the youth to break the Sabbath and to worship Satan on the Sabbath day of the Lord. This man here is a youth pastor. Now, I am going to apologize ahead of time for the sound of the music, but I must play it. Notice carefully. game begin when July 24th and July 25th instead of opening up the churches to preach the third angels message as we were told to teach our children the laws of God the leaders have put most of the churches on like down and they are feeding the members with entertainment especially our children now we're going to listen to the damnable words that are coming out of the mouth of this man. Again, when I watched the video, I thought this was a joke. Listen. Hello everyone, hello everyone. I'm Pastor Helvis Clay Moody from the Southwestern Union Office of Seventh-day Adventists. My emphasis is youth and young adult ministries. I want you to know that my office plans a sports ministry weekend every two years. However, due to COVID-19 or AKA the coronavirus, we have chosen to do something different. Something different, yes. What is that? We are planning a gaming tournament. That's right. We're calling all of you who are interested in FIFA. That's right. Soccer or 2K. That's right. Basketball to join us. If you are a Seven Adventist and this does not bother you to see where we are heading, how we've been deceived by our leaders, Think, think, think what's going on about what's going on in our world today. Think about what's going on in our world today. Do you think that we're very far away to Canaan or from Canaan? Or do you think that we're close to Canaan? How, how close do you think we are to Canaan? I believe that the same experience the children of Israel had when they were this close to the border of Canaan then the Midianites came into the camp with entertainment and many of the children of Israel could not enter the promised land because of the leaders bringing in the Midianites into the camp we are seeing the same thing as I said before I thought this was a joke the way this man is promoting this as if he was preaching 
I thought it was a joke. But as I was going through the pictures, even going to the fa their Facebook page, you know, at first somebody sent two pictures of this to me. Well, whenever somebody sent something to me, they thought that I might use. I'm not just going to use it. I'm going to do some research about it to make sure that it's legitimate. So as I was doing research about it, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. This is, this is serious. We are living at a time when we are seeing lockdowns and Sunday law is brewing. The Roman army is coming. What are the leaders doing? They are entertaining the members. Putting you to sleep. Don't worry. The Sunday law is not for another hundred years. Don't worry about it. And also, it's conditioning you to accept whatever the government is doing. Don't protest about anything. Don't protest. Accept everything. Because we, we are giving you entertainment. That's exactly what they did. They gave us the entertainment while we were on lockdown. To brainwash us. Listen. Now I want you to know that we're also having a dynamic worship experience July the 24th and July the 25th at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Now, 7.30 p.m., that would be going into Sabbath Friday night, right? And even right now in the U.S., 7 o'clock is still daylight the sun does not go down in the u.s right now until around close to nine o'clock in the in the evening so it's still sabbath you understand so whether this is 7 p.m on saturday that's still sabbath because the sun does not go down until 9 p.m in the u.s right now so what happened to the sabbath of the lord to the commandments of god now, can, can you see how they're going to lead us to receive the mark of the beast? Because if you're going to violate the Sabbath of the Lord, that means you're going to regard Sunday. That's a substitution. And I want you to know that space is limited to, to sign up for the gaming tournament. Space is limited to sign up for the gaming tournament. No church services. No gathering, no evangelism. In some cases, they said no baptism because the COVID-19 is so dangerous. And since Elder Wilson is still in his cave and social distancing himself from us and wearing a mask, we cannot have baptism. You can die in your sin. So go to the link below and register. I want you to know that we are on the winning team for we are playing for the GOAT. We are playing for who? He said we are playing for, we are on the winning team. We are playing for the GOAT. For the GOAT, he says. Who's the GOAT? Well, he's going to say the goat is Jesus. Listen. Who's the goat, someone may ask. The greatest of all times is none other than Jesus Christ. So I want you to join us and fellowship and worship with us and engage in the gaming tournament. Remember, I love you, but God loves you best. See, video game. Unbelievable. He said... We are on the winning team. We are playing for the goat. And then he dared to say the goat there is Jesus. No, that is Satan. That is referring to. Can you picture Jesus sitting there in our living room playing video games with us? Hmm? Especially Anubis video game? Talking about Lucifer? Can you picture Jesus doing that? No. At such a time as this? Can you picture Jesus say, you know what? Take a break from everything. You see? There's a lockdown going on. Just relax. Play some video games. I'm trying to find words right now to express myself. I'm so angry about this. Righteous indignation, that is. I am so angry about it. When I first watched this thing, I just couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. 
whose parents, Seventh-day Adventist parents, would allow their children to attend this so-called virtual worship? Whose Adventist parents, on Sabbath of all things, would allow this? Notice what Spirit of Prophecy says. Those who would not fall a prey to Satan devices must do what again? God well the avenues of the soul. They must avoid reading, seeing, or hearing that which will suggest impute thoughts. The mind must not be left to dwell at random upon every subject that the enemy of souls may suggest. The heart must be faithfully sentineled or evils without will do what? Awaken evils within, and the soul will wander in what? In darkness. Isn't that what's happening? They are leading us, Ted Wilson, the leaders are leading us to perdition, and we don't see this. The majority of seven Adventists cannot see this. They trust the leader so much, soon and very soon, the same way the people trusted the Pharisees. They're going to cry for the crucifixion of the remnant of the seed of the woman. They're going to do that. But again, Jesus says, be thou faithful unto death. You will be betrayed by your loved ones, by parents. Do you love Jesus is the question. Well, Christ says, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. And the Bible tells us, notice, go to Romans chapter 6 with me. Romans chapter 6. The Bible says, this here, in regard to obedience. Whom are you going to obey in these last days? Is it Ted Wilson or is it Jesus Christ? Notice in chapter 6 of the book of Romans. The Bible says in verse 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So the one that you yield to, the voice that you listen, is the one who is your God. Many today have chosen Ted Wilson as their God. He said social distancing, shut down the churches, no evangelism, no baptism, and wear your mask, don't forget that one. And they listen to that. Notice, go to the book of 1 Samuel now. Where are we heading to? As we're coming to a close. Go to the book of 1 Samuel with me, chapter 15. Again, it's one thing to hear about the word, but it's another thing to be doers of the word because notice what Samuel says here in 1 Samuel chapter 15. And the Bible says, Samuel was talking to Saul. He says in verse 22, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in, what's the word? Obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is what? Is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the what? The fat of what? Of rams. But then notice the next verse. For rebellion is as what? Iniquity. And idolatry, because thou hast rejected the what? The word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being what? King. So if you hear the word and you reject what the word says, what will happen? God will reject you from being king. I believe that God has rejected the general conference of seven Adventists a long time ago. Because they have forsaken the laws. Of the Lord they have been moving away from God and deep into apostasy and taking the church to perdition and as I said in the beginning they are blind men leading the blind and if you join them you will fall into that same pit as well again the Bible says we must be not only hearers of the word but we must be doers of the word and we must delight in hearing the word of God and in doing the word of God and meditate in his law. Let's pray.
loving Father, our God, which art in heaven. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the truth that you have given unto us. But as we read, hearing it is one thing, doing it is another thing. And we also read that it will require sacrifices on our part to keep the commandments of God. And we can see this based on what's taking place in our world today. Help us to be courageous in these last days. Help us, Lord, not to be deceived because you have said that deception will be so great in these last days. If it were possible, even the very elect might be deceived. So help us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, until he comes again in the clouds of glory. In his name we pray. Amen.